you guys. Time once again for the matinee show. This is matinee 73 or something like that. Holy yeah. shit, I can't believe we've been doing this for 73 weeks. Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous. It doesn't seem like it's been that long. It really doesn't. You know, time flies when you get old. Yeah. Everybody says so. It's true. Yeah. You but accelerate yeah. towards the grave at a fucking exponential <laughs> rate. Just like Sonic yeah. the Hedgehog, which was yeah. not one of the movies that we saw this week. No. Uh, we did see a Netflix series and two movies in the theater, so let's get right into it. The first one we're going to talk about is the Netflix original series, Lock and Key. Yeah. Now, uh, probably most people know this, but this is an adaptation of the very wildly popular uh, graphic novel series that uh, ran from, 2000, I believe, 2003 to 2008, written by Joe Hill, um, you know, who's... Stephen King's kid, but he's also like a very well-known uh, novelist in his own right and illustrated by Gabriel Rodriguez. Now, the funny thing about this show was that this is like this poor show, it, or this poor graphic novel series, I guess. Because the graphic novel series was so popular, this thing has been, they've done like adaptions of this, like going all the way back to 2011. Now, originally they were going to adapt as a TV series for Fox, they went ahead, they cast the whole fucking thing, they spent all this money on it, they made a pilot, and then Fox looked at it and decided, no, nah, we don't really want to option that. They did, however, like, show the, um, the pilot at Comic-Con, I think back in 2014 or something like that, with the hopes that, like, another production company would pick it up. So then it starts going into development again in 2016, and in 2017, Hulu comes along and says, hey, yeah, make us a pilot too, like a different one, and maybe we'll pick it up. So another pilot was made, and Hulu decided they didn't want it either. Yeah. So finally, finally, in 2018, Netflix said, okay, well, we want to do an adaptation, and we will order a season. However, we want to start all over again. So pretty much um, everybody that was cast in the original pilot, none of the people are there except for the little kid that plays Bodhi, um, who was the same kid. He played uh, Georgie and It, the kid that got his arm bitten off. Yeah. Uh, that was him. And uh, so he, I, I believe he's the only one remaining from the original cast from this poor show, which has taken such a circuitous route to actually becoming a series. So how did it turn out? Not too bad. Um, I will say that I'm not, um, I haven't read the original uh, graphic novel series, although I, I did read like a very um, complicated like synopsis of it, like where the story goes and everything, because it's very long. I mean, there's like a lot of uh, episodes. So... I do know that some people have been complaining because it does seem like this series, which is 10 episodes, it downplays the horror element a bit in favor of more like relationship drama, which it seems like the, the graphic novel series had that too. Like, you know, it has the same like teenage characters and the little kid character and everything like that. And a lot of it is, revolves around them. But the, it seems like the original series or the original book series was a lot more... I mean, the town in the books was called Lovecraft, Massachusetts, because it was supposed to be like a demonic, you know, thing. And they went more into like the history of where the demons came from, why the demons were around the well, like why they were behind the, you know, the Omega door or whatever, and all that other stuff. So this, this series, and, you know, I don't know if it's going to get another season or not. I assume it probably will. Cause I think it, you know, is, is doing fairly well, but maybe they'll get more into that. This one pretty much sticks to like the middle portion of the book series. Whereas it's just like this family, the dad gets murdered by, he's a guidance counselor, I think. And he gets murdered by um, one of his students who's like disturbed. And the rest of the family moves out to his like ancestral mansion in this town in Massachusetts, which the name of it in the series has been changed to Matheson. So I guess they're homaging that now it's more like a Richard Matheson story than a Lovecraft story, which, you know, fair enough. And so they move there and they soon start to discover that this house is full of like all these keys that do like really cool magical shit. Like, you know, one of them, you can stick it in the back of your head and it like shows you that you can go inside your own head and like walk around in your brain and stuff or all your thoughts or whatever there's one that can take you anywhere in the world like if you stick it in a door and like you know you you picture somewhere and you can go there so there you know there's there's all these really cool things and so there's kind of this other story where you know the demon is trying to get the kid to find keys for her 
and then it ties in with the dad and the dad's murder and the shit that happened like before and everything. So I feel like, I, I don't know, like I feel like the balance was a little too far into the teenage relationship drama because a lot goes into, you know, the two teenage kids, Tyler and Kinsey, who, you know, them going to high school and dealing with their dad's death and, you know, helping little Bodie like find the keys and everything like that. I think they leaned into that a little too hard. There are like some really cool, like I really love the concept of this and I really love, um, you know, and, and I think it's intriguing like where they could go with it. I would love to see like a second season where they went back and like talked about the, you know, the ancestors of the Locke family and like how the demons got there and all. Cause I know how they did because I looked up the, cause I read about the books. But, um, so I don't know if they're going to do that or not, but I definitely feel like they need to amp up the horror and fantasy thing, fantasy factor, as opposed to like the relationship. Yes, you need relationship drama. Yes, you need, you need to care about the characters and stuff, which you do, but I kind of wish that they would make it a bit darker. I, you know, I see what they're going for. It's like, yes, Stranger Things is very successful. Uh, a series of unfortunate events is very successful. This, so this gives me a vibe like that. And also kind of like a little bit of house with a clock in its walls. It gave me a little bit of that kind of vibe too, where it's just kind of like this magical realism, but not too dark. I feel like this could benefit from going darker. Um, so I kind of hope they do that. I did really like it and it kept me like interested until the end and everything, but I feel like it's a little too tame considering the source material, even though, like I said, I, I can see why they're doing that because, you know, their, their other shows like that are really successful. This is, it's a little bit like Haunting of Hill House too, although that's obviously a lot more adult oriented and a lot darker. This is like a sort of like a kid version of that. You know what I mean? So it, it's not, it's not bad. It's like, I, I really liked it. And I really thought the, the concept is really cool. The set design is cool. Like the inside of Key House, I believe that whole entire thing is a set, the inside at least. And uh, they did a phenomenal job on that. It's beautiful looking. And I loved like all the keys and finding the keys and like finding out what they did and shit like that. I just, they need more of that and less of like the teen drama. That's all I'm saying. But overall, yeah. I th I think it's a pretty good show, mm. you know. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> no comment. Like well, it. he wasn't really paying attention. No, to it, it. well, it violated all kinds of rules real early, and I'm just going, nah, no, nah, I'm not gonna like this one. So I just. Uh, what didn't you like about it? Boring, first of all, slow. Uh, nothing, nothing really happened to it. That pe nothing happened in the in the first twenty minutes to pique my interest. I just didn't think it was interesting. Yeah. Well, just, you know. Yeah. Like you said, a lot of teen drama. Yeah, like I said, I, you yeah. know, I, I didn't It's not mind. made for me. And I yeah. mean, and we're, we're, we're in an era where they make, they make things for people. Like, okay, this is for women, and it's for this age group. Or this is for men, and it's for this age group. Nothing is like, yeah, this is way down here. We need to move this. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can hear yeah. it. <laughs> so everything seems to be made for a certain uh, uh, well, a in intersectional demographic or something. And, you know, white 50-year-old male? No, you don't want to watch this shit. Well, it's just like boring. I, well, like I said, I didn't find it boring, but I do feel like they, since the graphic novel series was a lot more horror-oriented and a lot more Lovecraftian, yeah, but that's not what we got. I wish that they had gone yeah, a little that, bit more in that direction. Right, that's not what we got. When we're doing a movie review, we're talking about what they gave us, and what yeah. they gave us is just, yeah. Okay, I did whatever. like it, but I can see how, yeah. but but I can see how that criticism could be made. Yeah, especially after I read about the graphic novel series and the story behind that. And, you know, what happened and all of that stuff. So it is much darker. Even Stranger Things, you know, for me, it was a little more watchable because it was set in a time period in which I lived and it had kind of a fucking cool gestalt and kind of a nostalgia, a nostalgic quality to it. You know what I mean? I'm just kind of amazed how well they reproduced fucking the mentality yeah, of the pretty, 80s and the way things amazing. looked. I mean, so that was a certain draw. But this is, okay, this is generic. Generic and bland. It is a okay. little, yeah. Okay, like but... I said, they considering the how cool the concept is, yeah. they could have done more yeah. with it. And Once like I said, have... I kind of hope that they do that if they get it. Once you story. have like a generic and kind of bland corporate feel to something, and not much happens out of the ordinary, you check out early. You don't care about the story. Yeah, you know what I mean. 
we, we live in another era. We don't live in the in the slow burn era anymore. And uh, I think I think you have to be in certain moods to watch movies and series. And most people are are not. Most people who are just randomly have to watch a movie or, or they start watching, but they're not really, they may not be in that mood. I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to say. I just thought it was bland and corporate. Yeah. And, you know, I, I kind of agree. Like I said, I liked it, but I agree with that assessment. I just, yeah. to me, it seemed like the concept is so cool. The source material is so cool. They could have done a little bit more with it. Like they could have adjusted the balance more. Should have been a, an, maybe like an exciting story. In a, well, <laughs> well, no, they should have gone like a much darker direction. Yeah, yeah in other words, exciting. You know, because there was some cool shit in there. And then yeah. like, especially like at the end, like in the last episode, like they actually finally got kind of busted out with the demons and everything like that. And I was like, they should have had more of that like throughout. You know what I mean? There was yeah. like some flashes of like really cool dark shit in there, but it's like, I don't. It wasn't quite enough. It seemed like it was yeah. more geared. It, it seemed more geared toward a younger audience, like like a series of unfortunate events or something like that. It gave me that kind of vibe. You have, you have to give me something early on in that first ten minutes to give me any incentive to hook me, to give me the incentive to con continue watching it, and just the nature of the story that's being told and the characters. And it's just I don't care. Yeah. Well, you know yeah. what I mean? Like. I loved the first three or four seasons of the fucking Walking Dead. I was instantly in that. You know, I was. I wanted to. You know, what's the next? What's going to happen next episode? I wasn't like that with this. I didn't care. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. So, like I said, I'm kind of hoping if it gets yeah. a second season, it'll kind of take some of the criticisms it's been getting on board and sort of go more in the direction of the graphic novel and less in the direction of more family friendly kind of, I don't know if I'd call it family friendly, but it's definitely geared toward a younger audience. And I think they should kind of more go in an adult, go in a more haunting of Hill House direction. I mean, you know what I mean? That shit was boring. Huh? This movie, this this series was fucking boring. Yeah. yeah. No, I thought you said Haunting of Hill House. No, no, no. Haunting of Hill House was fucking no. awesome. Everybody said no, that. No, this one was boring. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, check it out if it sounds like your kind of thing. Um, it's, like I said, it's not as good as I hear the graphic novel series was, but, you know, Let's see what your take on it. For the second movie, we actually went to the theater finally and saw DC's Birds of Prey. Yeah. Boy, I tell you what. <laughs> I thought this shit was going to suck. I really did. I thought this was going to be <laughs> some kind of man-bashing ultra woke fest of fucking because the way the way they the way they sold this thing is it was going to be a movie about misogyny so every fucking every fucking guy out there went oh here we go man all their, all their tiny oh, balls oh here we up. go it, it this is going to be some anti-man shit but then when i watched it it was pretty entertaining and it wasn't that woke really it was like fake woke you know what i mean please don't use that word it was fake woke it was the same kind of shit. It was the same kind of shit. You did the same kind of movie you'd get in the nineties. This wasn't anything new. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. This was actually. It's funny because um, I didn't have a lot of like. I didn't see Suicide Squad. I know a lot of people like kind of shit on that because it, it wasn't just because I you know thought it was going to suck or anything. It's just I'm not super into superhero movies, so it's not like I'll go see them and like sometimes I enjoy them, even the Marvel Marvel ones <coughs> and stuff. But it's never anything that I'm just like, oh, I got to go out and see that. You know what I mean? So I just never got around to seeing Suicide Squad, but I did hear later on, you know, that pretty much it's pretty much universally like everyone shit on it. So never when this it. came out and I saw the previews, I'm like, I don't know, that was kind of dumb. And I it was looks like, dumb. And I thought, you know, I was like, man, Suicide Squad got really shit on like over the years. So it's like, maybe that won't really be any good. But then it seemed like. I don't know. Like, I, I wasn't all that jazzed about seeing it, but then I just started kind of hearing through the grapevine that they're like, hey, this movie's actually pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, so Tom's like, well, maybe we should go see it. And I was like, yeah, I guess so. I wasn't like super jazzed about seeing it because like I said, it's, you know, it's not really my type of movie. But then when we went to see it, I was like, that was actually a fucking a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah. That was a fun fucking movie. Yeah, it's not a serious movie. The the problem, okay, what they did was, is it kind of took, 
kind of had the tone of the old Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, what was it, Claire Danes? Was that her name? Uh, 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 the Romeo, uh, Romeo and, and Juliet. The Baz Luhrmann one. Yeah, it kind of had that tone mixed with, I don't know, John Wick and maybe yeah, like... Yeah, I think it was the same stunt coordinator. Yeah, and it. like maybe mixed in with a little bit of, I don't know, like Tank Girl. Yeah. And um, I liked it. It was, uh, it was funny. And it ha- it kind of had a tone very similar to Shazam. I love Shazam. Uh, yeah, that, it that actually movie. really it reminded me a bit. It's it's a completely different movie than Shazam. Yeah, but because Shazam had a Power Rangers element to it too. Yeah, true. Because the original series had a damn Power Rangers yeah. element to it. It was a little a little more closer to the Romeo and Juliet, the Basil, what's his name, really, which I yeah. love that movie. Yeah, I, remember, I know. But I love that. I love that movie. But it had, it had kind of like that kind of edit, and. Uh, I was kind of pissed because I was looking forward to fucking bagging on this movie, but I can't bag on it. It was pretty good. I liked it. That's what I mean. It was actually <laughs> a really lot of fun. And like I said, I wasn't, I, you know, I, I don't look forward to like shitting on movies or anything like that. It's like sometimes I'm looking forward to one. Sometimes I'm just like, okay, we'll see how this one goes. Yeah. This was one where, like I said, I'd seen the trailers and I was kind of like, mm, I don't know. If that's for me, but there, then when we saw it, I was kind of like, I actually really liked yeah. it. I think I liked it as much as I liked Shazam, it's and got, I liked Shazam quite a bit. It's not doing well at the box office. All right, Sonic is kicking its ass. But I looked at all the data and I looked at what the problem, and, and this is this is this is how they fucked this movie up. First of all, the fucking title. It has a t- ridiculous fucking title. The real title is. Birds of Prey, the Fantabulous... And the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a fucking shit, piss-poor fucking title. It should have just been called Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey. That's that... Well, Because the Birds of Prey aren't really in it until the very fucking Yeah, and considering... I mean, yeah, everybody's going to see Harley Quinn. The characters, the individual Birds of Prey, like Black Canary and the Huntress and all them, are in it, like, individually, but they don't really get together until, like, the last 15 or 20 minutes of the movie. Second problem is they had... It had shitty trailers. That the the trailers that you saw don't illustrate the way that movie is. The second trailer was better. A little bit better. We but saw two different trailers, and it's man. like the first one. I was like, "Yeah, that looks retarded." Fire that motherfucker! The Whoever second one shit. was like, "Well, that looks yeah. better, but it still doesn't yeah. look like that good a movie." Whoever made those trailers needs to be fired. All right. The third one. The th- the third thing about it is that. The way they handled the fucking advertising campaign and where they went on little talk shows and shit like that. I mean, they had old Obi Wan Kenobi. What's that fucker's name? Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. I like the guy. He's saying this is a movie about massage. Every fucking, every fucking male potential fan is like, oh shit, it's gonna be preachy. Yeah, that's gonna be preachy. So you lost a lot of the male audience. All right. And then it's rated R. That's another fucking problem. This should have been PG. There's no reason why this is. It's not worth it. I'd take a couple fucks out of there and maybe get rid of that grenade explosion and make this PG and you'd get a lot of more asses in the seats. It's funny because there's no reason for somebody, this to be our- um I can't remember if it was the New York Times or somebody like one of the big uh, you know papers that had there that have reviewed this. They said pretty they really liked it too, but they said pretty much the exact thing that, thing that you said. They yeah. said this doesn't really need to be no. rated R. It's like yes, there's like yes, someone like has a grenade and explodes and you know blows apart. Um, yes, there's black mask and he does like cut people's faces off. Although you don't, they don't really show that. They just kind of show like the lead up, the lead up and the aftermath. You know, people's legs get broken and shit like that. But it's like not super super graphic. Yeah. Um. It's mostly there. Yeah. There's like a lot of swearing. Um. Stuff like that. So yeah, I could yeah. see how if they could just, they probably could just trim like a minute. Yeah. And, and what what it would really be PG thirteen. What really killed this movie is the advertising campaign. They sold it as a woke movie for females females didn't go to it all right you looked at the data it, the, uh, the the audience is like 60 70 percent male that's who's going to see it all right but there should have been more males and there should have been the kids for the pg thing it would have been much more successful if you had a positive advertising campaign because the movie is not fucking preachy and fucking and, and it's not preachy not it's, at all. It's very upbeat and and a lot of fun. It's not. There's nothing. 
serious yeah, about this like movie. Yeah, it's like Harley Quinn's character. I think the reason that it's people a comedy, like her action character, adventure comedy. I mean, you know, Margot Robbie, like, yeah. you know, she wanted to produce this movie. I think because she really likes playing Harley Quinn, and yeah. she was upset that like Suicide Squad hadn't done that well, or she thought the character had been hard done by by that movie. So she, you know, basically said, "I want to play the, play it again." And it's like, so she's been like trying to get this developed for a long time. And I mean, the thing about it is that. Yes, Harley Quinn is uh, a psychotic, mm -hmm. but you know what I mean? She's an anti-hero for sure. But the way that it's approached in this movie She is doesn't just kill anybody, though. Not really. She no. hurts some people, but most of them deserve it, to be well, honest Well, when she you. fights the cops, she uses non-lethal weapons. Yeah. She, yeah, I guess she did kill some bad guys, but they were trying to kill her. That's so what that's I mean. That's justifiable homicide. Yeah. There, she doesn't murder anybody. Not in cold blood, no. No. Now, she does some shitty things. But he, she did some shitty things to some bad guys. Yeah. Well, I mean, she did a shitty thing to that kid, too, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, but she didn't really have much of a choice. That's true. Um, but she is an anti-hero. Yeah. Another, another thing that might be wrong with the movie is that I, a lot of people said they didn't like the costumes that she wore. I didn't have a big problem with I them. I didn't either. I thought they were okay. Uh, but somebody who's really into this character who makes videos and shit about DC comics said that really what sells that character is kind of a punk rock look. And they showed, he showed old drawings of her throughout her comic book, you know, history of this character. And, I, and, and once I saw kind of a more punk rock versions of that character, I was like, yeah, that probably would have sold more tickets. Yeah. If she had a more Although of a punk rock gestalt. I did she, like her look in this, though. I have yeah, to say. it was okay, it, but it, it looks tame compared yeah. to some of the stuff that she wore in the comic books. And I think the trailers would have been more effective if it was had her in the kind of a punk rock. She almost kind of looked a little bit like Catwoman at certain times. Yeah, you know what I mean, like a Harlequin version of Catwoman. And I think that would have sold a lot, probably a lot better. And man, those those trailers were terrible for this, and that. The advertising campaign and the I've damn seen title. I've seen that happen a lot, though. It's like because sometimes we'll see a trailer because we go to the movies a lot, so we see a lot of yeah. trailers. And like sometimes I'll see a trailer and go, "Wow, yeah. that looks like the stupidest movie yeah, ever." You go, but then when good. you go see it, and you're like, "Hey, that was yeah. actually pretty good." Yeah. <laughs> it was the advertising. I don't trust any trailer anymore. <laughs> it was the advertising campaign. I think that's kind of hurting this movie and the title. And I do feel like though that maybe like the better reviews it gets. Like I could, I could totally see how some people might not like this movie. Mm. Like for one, it's very frenetic. It's very frenetically paced. It jumps back and forth a lot. It's very like chaotic. Um, you know what I mean? So, but that's kind of like in fitting with her character because she'll be like go on about something and then be like, "Oh wait, I forgot to tell you this. We have to go back to a week ago." And then there's like a long segment like that. So, you know, I can see how that might annoy some people or anything. But I feel like anybody that is into Harley Quinn's character or knows about the movie portrayal of that character, I don't think they would be bothered by that. I just think this is like, it was a super fun, it was super colorful. Yeah. Um, the action scenes were amazing. Like the yeah. way they shot them, like there all the fight scenes. There wasn't enough of them though. There, there I think yeah. there should have been a couple more. Like the one in the warehouse where she was fighting the fucking bikers. I love yeah. the, for those bikers with their fucking equipment and what they were wearing and shit. Yeah. It looked really good. The fight scene was good. Then the cocaine blew up in the air and they were slurring <laughs> cocaine and fight. All that shit was really good. Uh, I'm telling you, what's hurting this movie was the title, the ad campaign, and the ad campaign, including the trailers. I was expecting a real preachy kind of man-hating fucking third wave woke fest intersection. No, that's not really what it was. It was actually kind of like an old school 1960s Russ Meyer flicks like Faster Pussycat, Kill, 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 but updated a lot. It's it's not new. This is a throwback movie, really. It is kind of, it's yeah. A throw, it's a good old-fashioned throwback action-adventure comedy. I mean, you, like I it. said, you do get the thing where, at, you know, at the end they all start to work together, but it's not so much, they all start to work together because they all have a common goal. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're trying to take down, you know, Black Mask, played you, by Ewan McGregor. Yeah, you, and you could nitpick it and say, well, there's no men good guys, all men are bad guys. Well, she's dealing with the criminal underworld. Well, and a, most of the women are bad guys too. Yeah, and the women are bad guys too. <laughs> but you know, you, some people were re really trying to read into this movie to make it woker than it was, which would give them a reason not to go. I thought the I, I think the movie's a sleeper. 
I think over time people might like this one a little bit I better. I think so too. I think it's going to pick up. I mean, I, I feel like probably Suicide Squad, I feel like people hate it even now, you know, more now than they did when it I've first came out. I've never seen it. I haven't seen it either, so I'm not commenting. Makes I'm just you, saying that's what Makes you wonder the, if that movie wasn't as bad as they said it was. Maybe not, but like I said, it's we've had a few years to reflect on that, and I still hear people talking about how bad it was. Like I said, I don't know if it was bad or not. I didn't see it. but well, So I feel like maybe that'll happen with this one. Like maybe... You know, because of the trailers, because of the title, because of other things, it was like people were like, oh, or because of the lingering stench of yeah. Suicide Squad and people were like, I don't really want to see that. But maybe the fact that it's getting like pretty decent reviews and yeah. people seem to be enjoying it. Yeah, and I believe those audience reviews. Well, I and, read and uh, I've read a lot of like, um, I read yeah. a lot of, um, you know, like professional reviews and stuff too. And like 80, 90% of them like really, really liked them. Yeah, I don't think there's really anything good. wrong with it. So it's, well, a lot of times they're shills, but I, I would kind of agree with what I saw that they said. Well, I don't think, you know, they're saying the same shit that we said. You yeah. Know, they had some of the same criticisms about like how it was marketed and right. it's like, you know, probably, oh, they did. probably it shouldn't have been an R, you know, they yeah. could have got a wider audience, you know, cause all they would have to do is take a couple they things could save, out. They could save this. They wait a couple months and around Christmas time, they do what they did with the Deadpool and come yeah. out with, <laughs> Deadpool, with a PG-13 with the PG-13 version. version of it. You come out with a PG-13 version of this with a different title and a slightly different advertising campaign for christmas and you'd they'd probably make more money on this again it's actually kind of getting unju unjustifiably fucking shit canned i think um uh, that's just my opinion i mean yeah me too and like i said i wasn't really expecting to say that i was expecting this to be like an okay movie but i actually had a lot more fun yeah. with it than i thought i thought it yeah. was a blast um i was gonna say before like when you were talking about fight scenes i was like i think my best my favorite fight scene was when they was when she was with she was on the roller skates and like hunters on the motorcycle and they were like jumping back and forth into the car and shit like that one thing about like i said i think the same stunt person that worked on or the same stunt coordinator that worked on john wick i think like worked on this movie it as well like it. and you can tell because the fight scenes look very realistic it's like yeah. in a way that there's some things that obviously you know like a normal person couldn't really do and stuff like that but the way that it shot doesn't look like all CGI. It doesn't look like Marvel, you know, superhero fights where everybody's flying around no. like little tennis balls or anything like that. It really looked like actual people doing acrobatic shit and fighting. Yeah. And it was staged really well. So you could like yeah. tell what was going on. It's like it wasn't like it was kind of quickly edited, but not so quickly that you couldn't right. tell what was happening. The edit was very much that old Romeo Juliet. I liked it. Very yeah. fast paced, good cuts, uh, close ups on people. And then like graphics would pop up about what their names and who they were. And then there was there was voiceover. She'd voice over stuff, which is usually terrible, but it worked in this in in, in this. Yeah, because that's kind of more in line with it's her a, character, and it has a goofy context. It jumps around a little bit, but it is fast paced. There's sh there's flashbacks and stuff in it. It's fast paced. They're tr it's trying to give you nonstop nonstop action, and it only slows down a couple times, and not for very long, really. It was it was a good movie. It was, yeah, it pretty much keeps on going. I mean, some yeah. of my favorite shit in this. One of my favorite jokes in this was just like a total throwaway gag about Frida Kahlo, which I thought yeah, was yeah, like yeah. that fucking cracked me up. So I was like, ah, I saw that shit. Yeah, the, the whole and shit her of buying the egg sandwich. Yeah, I was gonna say the whole shit about the breakfast sandwich, and she yeah. like stuffs it down her shirt, and she's yeah. like running down the street with her fucking breakfast sandwich. Because I was like, I, I feel that I, I feel yeah. the perfect breakfast sandwich thing. Yeah. Also, uh, only criticism I could probably make was. Um, Oh, I was going to say, too, uh, Ewan McGregor was fucking great in this. He just yeah. he decided, he's like, you know what? I'm just going to chew all the scenery. And it yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. And it totally yeah, worked. Yeah, yeah. He was just, like, totally over the top and foppish. And he was just, like, yeah. and he was hilarious. He was yeah. just, like, fucking, he leaned right into it. He, kind of, he plays kind of like this uh, evil kind of, like, pansexual fucking club owner who's just a fucking total psychopath. Yeah, and, and he's just uh, like so, and you the know, black mask. You don't see him put it on till the very end. Some people criticize the movie for that, but I don't think he's a very famous DC character anyway. That's what I mean. It's they just, just needed an antagonist for this right. movie. Like, it, 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 yeah, it don't. This is not. This is not a movie to be taken seriously and overanalyzed. That's what I mean. It's, you know, it, it's just it, a it, fucking comedy. It was movie. as fun as Shazam, like I said. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Only, like I said, the only thing I could ding it for it needed more Huntress. Yeah. Mary Elizabeth Winstead was so fucking funny in this because she yeah. was just like she was so deadpan because she had like social anxiety and stuff yeah. and you could tell like she 
And, like, the whole shit with her, like, um, you know, she's going around killing all these people with a crossbow. Don't call me the crossbow killer. And he's like, everybody's calling her the crossbow because she's like, God damn it. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Because she's trying to get people to yeah. call her Huntress. And she's, like, really, she's, like, socially anxious and doesn't know how to, like, interact with people and stuff. Yeah. And it's, like, really, really funny. So it kind of, like, needed yeah. more of her, I feel like. But that's kind of the only and thing I can knock it for. And, of course, you know, they're selling kind of a girl power angle. But it's kind of self-deprecating because they fail a lot, too. It's just funny. You know, it's... So I'm, that's what I was saying. It's just kind of like a fake woke movie. It's it's just a comedy movie. You know, don't take the shit so seriously. That's what I mean. Yeah, I didn't take it very seriously. Yeah. I just thought it was like a lot of fun. And now I might yeah. have to actually go back and watch Suicide Squad. I wouldn't mind yeah. unless everybody tells me no, don't do it. I actually wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't mind owning this one on Blu-ray. Uh, like I, like I've said before, my my words stand. I don't really like Marvel too much. I think Marvel is very kind of sterile and corporate and lacks. Yeah, cor- they're good, but I don't. It's, they're not memorable. Yeah, you get done with it, and you're like, what happened? You know what I mean? I barely remember. But all the DC I mean. stuff I've seen kind of made a, an impression on me a little bit more. And I didn't like Batman versus Superman that much. I had I didn't it. Neither. I thought it was kind of you know. I think I fell asleep. It was, it was long. The longer yeah. version of it made a little more sense. I had to go see it again. I, I the ones, it. I feel like DC, when they try to do something more serious, it always comes across as kind of boring. It's like, yeah. don't try to be Marvel. Marvel already yeah. has that like epic, we're very right. serious superhero. Do goofy shit. Right. Even, is, if it's, even if it fails, it's Aqu- like... Aquaman was awesome. It was kind of like the old Flash Gordon, which I loved. Yeah, that's what I mean. It was just I love cheesy. Flash Gordon. Uh, the 1980 Flash Gordon is one of my favorite movies, and it looks great on Blu-ray. If you guys haven't seen it, i got to plug that movie. Watch that shit on Blu-ray <laughs> on a modern fucking... That's what it was like when we saw it in the theater as kids. It's fucking really fucking epic. It looks like shit on VHS and, and DVD. But uh, I love fucking uh, Aquaman. I didn't see... I didn't see Wonder Woman, but everybody says it's great. Everybody I, says Wonder I, Woman. I, I yeah, gotta we, have get to, we gotta see that. Uh, Shazam, I loved it. Yeah, I loved Shazam. Uh, I think else? we saw that like three or four times yeah. in the theater, I think. <laughs> the Harley Quinn movie, I liked it. Yeah. Uh, what else did we see that was um, from DC that I liked? Oh, shit, man, I can't even remember now. I think that might be it. Yeah. But I gotta see uh, I gotta see Wonder Woman. Yeah, I've uh, like I've I've heard really good things about that. And like pretty much every review uh, of the Harley Quinn movie. Oh well Joker's D C. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that was excellent. Although I don't even like think of that. It's, in not, the same, the same, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same style. No. But every like every review I've seen of like the Harley Quinn movie is putting it up there. They said you know it's not quite as good as like Wonder Woman, but they said it's up there with like Shazam and like all the other yeah. all their other good ones. So DC, I don't know. I feel like DC needs to come up with a new Batman and a new Superman. Something that can fucking do we kick really ass. need another Batman and another Superman though? Well, I feel like they've to... made so many. Well, I think they need to make. I think they need to make a Batman that fits with that billion dollar Joker, in that style. I guess. And the, and it's happening in the seventies. But I don't know. It's it's in just kind of like Gotham. it's kind of like you know Marvel. It's like, do we really need more Spider Man movies? No, no shit against Into the Spider Verse because that was rad. But it's like they've made yeah. so many, they've rebooted them, they've and then especially like Batman and Superman, it's like not only have they had like fifty bajillion million movies, but they've also had like T V series and they've also like all these other offshoots. And I feel like I, I just feel like they should go more into like their lesser known characters because it's like, yeah. do we really need another fucking Batman movie? Well, I was like I liked a lot of the Batman movies, but I just feel like we don't need another one. For me, Toby Maguire is always gonna be fucking Spider Man. Yeah. And Christopher Reeves is always going to be Superman. Well, yeah. It's hard. You, you have to get the right people to play these roles, and they got to be traditional. Or it's just not that fucking character. You know what I mean? Superman's got to be just American as shit. You know what I mean? Just like the... He's got to be a... You know what I mean? He's got to be a stereotypical, almost iconic American superhero. And, you know, you need a certain kind of person for that. Somebody that doesn't have any back baggage. That was the thing about damn, you know, Reeves. Reeves showed up and he was already, you know, had such a good reputation with the public because yeah. he was in romance movies and shit like that, you know. So he didn't care. He was care. wholesome. He was wholesome. He has to be, and, and that's what Superman was. Superman was fucking wholesome. Yeah. You know, so you have to find an actor that can pull that off, you know. It's hard to find Hollywood today. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that, you know, the both DC and Marvel have such rich catalogs yeah. of, like, all these different characters and stuff like that, that 
I, I just feel, feel like it'd be cool. That's why I'm kind of glad to see, like, a Harley Quinn movie, to see, like, other ones that are, like, with other... I mean, I know she's not that much lesser known, I guess, but I would rather see that than another Batman movie or another yeah. Superman movie or another Spider-Man I don't think movie. this is going to do well enough at the box office to get a... Um to get a sequel. I mean, I, I hope it does, but it doesn't just... Doesn't I would totally like watch a movie about the Huntress, though. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think she could carry her own movie. You'd have know. to bring... You'd ha- If you brought... If you bought, brought Harley Quinn back, you'd have to bring back, like, a punk rock Harley Quinn. Yeah. Because I'll tell you what, she was great in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and she was yeah. great in this. I thought she was great in this. She really she embodies the this role. She can do the character. Margot Robbie is a really, like, she she's yeah. a really, uh, she can do, like, I, a lot of diverse roles. That's I, pretty cool. I think that one guy saying that a punk rock version of it, like the comic books, I think would be better. I think that would bring in even more people. If they bring it back, I hope they take it more in that direction. Yeah, I guess they could. Yeah. I mean, like I said, since this one went a little more non-traditional or away right. from her comic book counterpart a little bit. Or the red and black outfit. Yeah. With the little... That would work good, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just... But I think I think the, I think the movie actually was good. I thought yeah. it was very good. Yeah, I had a good time with it. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it at all. Like I said, all right. really funny, like, you know, just a fun time. You yeah. Know? Just, I, like, really colorful, like, yeah. really action-packed, you know. A lot of the humor was like really. I'm gonna buy it on Blu-ray. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's mm-hmm. quite a recommendation, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> didn't think I'd like it. Yeah, I didn't either. I, was, I like I said, I was expecting it to be like all right, but yeah. I actually had to, I thought it was a blast. Yeah. You know, so see see what you guys think. Yeah. <laughs> third movie we saw this week in the theater this is the horror movie the lodge now this actually um i believe it premiered at a uh, film festival early last year and it was supposed to actually come out in november of this year but it got put pushed back for whatever reason so we recently just saw it i had somebody like um message me earlier today like before we recorded this going hey how are you guys seeing that i'm like um it's just playing at the regular old amc theater i don't know where you guys live but okay. it played at the theater here. So, so maybe it's not, it's not getting a wide release. I don't know. Because right. um, usually when... Sh- I don't know. We don't usually get like a lot of more indie movies either. But I feel like AMC is trying to do a little bit better. because now they an have- indie movie? Yeah. Because yeah, okay, so. ne- now they have uh, AMC artisan films and right. all that other kind of stuff. Now this was directed by uh, Veronica Franz and Severin Fiala, who are Austrian. Now... Uh, it's a ho- hammer horror film. Uh, they were one of the producers, yeah. yeah. Um... Some of you might be familiar with those two names because they did the Austrian film Goodnight Mommy, which um, was, it, it almost has like a similar uh, setup to this one in the sense of like isolation and the fact that they're being two kids and like you're not really sure what's going on. Um, and I will say that um, if you liked Goodnight Mom- Mommy, you will probably like this one as well. Thematically, they're very similar, although kind of in practice, they come out very different. But the story is that there's this um, there's this guy and he has two kids um, named Aiden and Mia, and he uh, him and his wife, who is played by Alicia Silverstone, although she's not in it very much, like only a few minutes, like at the beginning, um, he they're kind of separated, and he decides that he's going to ask her to finalize the divorce um, because he wants to marry his much younger girlfriend, uh, which causes the mom of the two kids to commit suicide. Now, interestingly, the dad's girlfriend, apparently they've met, I think he was a journalist and he worked on a book about her because she was the only survivor of a cult. Like it was kind of like, um, it was like a real hardcore Catholic cult, but it, in practice it was kind of like that. Um, like the Heaven's Gate. Like the Heaven's Gate cult where they like all de- decided they were going to kill themselves and like go to, go to heaven go to heaven or whatever. Yeah. So she was like a little girl when that happened and she was the one that was left alive, like to document it and like show the world and everything like that. And to spread the teachings. To spread the teachings and, yeah. you know, show everybody their sacrifice or whatever. So the kids, you know, six months later, it's almost Christmas time. And the dad says to is the kids. Is this spoiler free? Hold on. Yeah, it's spoiler, spoiler free. free. Okay. So, you know, and he says, this is just the setup. Okay. Um, 
you know, the dad says to the kids, uh, you know, we're going to go up to, you know, the lodge, you know, which is kind of this remote, like, uh, you know, place out in fucking middle of nowhere. Like, I think it's in Massachusetts or New England somewhere. And uh, we're going to go up there for Christmas. Oh, and my new girlfriend is coming along. It's all been six months, like, since the kid's mom died. Now, the kids, probably understandably, um, kind of blame this woman, their, you know, soon-to-be stepmother, for the death of their mother. Um, you know, and you can kind of see why they do. So they're like not happy about this, but it all ends up, you know, they all end up going up there. It comes to pass that the two kids and the, and the woman whose name is Grace are left there alone while he has to go back to the city for a few days to, uh, do some work. Yeah. And shit gets weird from there. Yeah. <laughs> all right. This one, Jenny loved it. I did, yeah. But I had I had a lot of differences with it. Um, for me, it was just it just seemed just insufferably boring, very slow, and uh, things do happen, but they just happen kind of late for me, and, and it's just nah, I I didn't like it. That that's all I can really say about it. I mean, yeah. it'll, it'll spoil too much. Yeah, I don't um, really want to give anything away because this is one of those stories very much, like I said, if you saw Goodnight Mommy, um, this is a similar setup and it's like a similar, like I said, it's, you know, because that one was like two kids and then their mom came back from the hospital with bandages all over her face and they became convinced that she was not their mom anymore, like she was an imposter. Yeah. And you weren't really sure if they were right or if you know what I mean. So there was that kind of whole ambiguity. So this has a similar kind of vibe to it where you're not like when all this weird shit starts happening in the house, you know, there's like a snowstorm and like the power goes out and all this other kind of stuff and kind of cabin fever sets in. And so you're not really sure what exactly is going on until like later on, they do resolve it. Um, you know, so they don't like leave it ambiguous or anything like that. They do, they do tell you what's going on. But for a long time, you're not entirely sure. And I actually really, really liked that. This movie also gave me a real strong um, hereditary vibe, even down to like the dollhouse type of thing, because they have like a, you know, a dollhouse kind of motif going on in there, too. I didn't like it as much as I liked hereditary. But if you liked hereditary and if you liked Goodnight Mama, you will probably like this as well. Um, as Tom said, now, th this is definitely only recommended for people who like you know, art house horror, A24 type stuff. Slow burn. Because it's very, you know, it's very slow. It's very atmospheric. Most of it is concerned with, um, you know, these kind of long scenes of like trying to like have this, you know, this feeling of like claustrophobia or isolation yeah. um, and where you're not really sure what reality is. Um, so some people might find that a little, you know, a little tedious or anything like that. I really got into it and I thought it was like really creepy and like really unsettling, but I can see how somebody might not think that, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it, it, it's interesting to me that, like I said, I didn't like it as much as Hereditary, but this is definitely one that I want to watch again because the resolution of it makes me want to go back and see like what I missed much like hereditary. Cause like, if you, if you didn't know, like when you figure out like what happens at the end and then you go back and watch it again, there's all through the movie. There's like all kind of fucking clues that you don't see the first time because you don't know what's going to I didn't like happen hereditary. at the end. I didn't like hereditary. I know, but either. I'm just saying, but I liked Midsummer. Yeah. Um, but I know what you're talking about. I don't know if there's anything there worth seeing it again. Go. I mean, I just, I thought it was kind of a simple Well, story. I'm talking about me. I'm yeah. not talking about you. I don't well, care I'm if just, you see it again. <laughs> no, I'm just, <laughs> I don't think you're going to find anything there. That's what I'm thinking. No, I'm just interested to see the lead up to it. Like, oh, I don't yeah. want to spoil anything. I'm just right. saying I want to see. Because <laughs> I did notice, like, when I thought about it. Because this is a movie that I was that I was thinking about, like, much many hours after I saw it. And I was thinking about little details that I had noticed, like, in the beginning that seemed like they didn't mean anything. But then later on, I was like, oh, okay, I see what you know what I mean. So I, I would really like to, like, see this again to see, like, pick out all the shit that I missed because I like doing that. Like I said, that's what I did with Hereditary. And there's, that movie is, like, a whole different experience, like, the second time you watch it. Because mm -hmm. there's all kind of shit in there that you don't yeah. notice the first time. Because you don't know, like, what the outcome is going to be. But once you know what the outcome is and you go back and watch it, you're like, holy crap, I missed so much stuff. Mm. But um, I feel like this one might be another one like that. Like I said, it's, 
you can tell they're trying to go for like a shining type of vibe because it's like yeah. this this lodge and there's like the middle of nowhere and like someone is cra- maybe going crazy, maybe not. You don't really know. And you don't know like where the line between reality and insanity is. You don't know if everybody's dreaming. You don't know if everybody's, you know what I mean? So I really like that. Like I said, now, if you're into art house horror, if you're into that kind of slow burn type of shit, you should probably check it out. If you liked Hereditary, you'll probably love it. If you liked Goodnight Mommy, you'll probably love it. If you're more into like kind of traditional horror or more like slasher type of horror, you'll probably hate it, so probably stay away. This seems like it's going to be another one that's really divisive, but a lot of these art house horror films are. Oh, if you like The Witch, you would probably like this as well. Um, kind of a similar, it's kind of a similar vibe to that. Um, but you know what I mean? It's, I really liked it a lot. Tom hated it. It's, you know. I didn't hate it. <laughs> Here's the, he, he, yeah, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. I thought it was insufferable. Yeah. All right. I think, I think it, the story is not very complicated. Um, it's a simple story and I think the story is actually pretty good, but it would have made her a much better, like 30 minute short story. I thought that it was un- unnecessarily stretched out. Uh, they tried to make it very long uh, to try to give it gravitas and try to set some kind of a tone, but I didn't think it was effective. Okay. I think it should have just been shorter. Yeah. And, I mean, I could have got it. I could have made it. Could I could it could have also been a fast-paced horror movie? Tell that same story and wouldn't have been such a, a tedious experience. That's that's for the audience yeah that's what i'm saying yeah i just thought it was boring long shots long pan long close-ups big pan backs um conversations that don't really have to be there um you know what i mean just stuff like that european it, it's european yeah this gave Fucking, me oh it gave me a hagazusa vibe yeah now you told well. me that these are foreigners making this shit go yep yeah, that's what it is yeah, Austrian. Austrians. Right, like I yeah. said, now I had seen their first movie, like I, Good Night, lot, Mommy, which it, I really liked I couldn't a lot really too. put my finger on it until you said so. Like, well, of course, it's a European movie. Those fuckers take forever. <laughs> <laughs> Not like here, where everything's over in two seconds. Yeah, it's over in two seconds. We get that shit over with, man. Come on. Get it over with. Get that shit over with. Now, I'm just saying, you know, um, it's more of a an artwork than it is a piece of entertainment well it's an experience so, yeah, rather than see, you know what i mean it's and you have so, to like i said it's it's just like i mean anybody that's really into kind of like more atmospheric horror you have to kind of go into it with you have to just like let yourself get into it yeah and not don't try to fight it don't try to be like oh i wish it was this that and the other thing you just have to kind of like Immerse yourself in yeah, it. Yeah, like that first fucking half hour. That's what I mean. The you first can't do half that. of it, which is about an hour, I'm like, hurry the fuck up. Okay, I get the idea. Hurry the fuck up. What's happening? You know, and it's just that's the way I felt. You know what I mean? Just, yeah, but like I said, it's you know, it's just a different way of approaching right. things. The reason I enjoy these is because I just kind of let myself like immerse right. myself in the atmosphere and in the characters and everything like that because I want it to like take me somewhere. Yeah, know? that was another thing is I didn't like any of the characters. Really, well, the characters... There's nothing about these characters that's, uh, that... Were they're, interesting they're, because... They're just so bland. Ooh, if I say something about it, it's going to spoil I it. Thought so they, I better not. I but th- the, but the, main, uh, the main girl, Grace, uh, Riley Keough, I thought she was fucking great in this. It's all good acting, but I'm talking about the writing and who the characters are and the situation. I just thought it was all just very bland. Very bland and generic. Yeah. I mean, I, that, I mean it, it could have been any, any girl, any boy... Any any guy, any chick, you know what I mean? It just they were just very generic. So, like I said, you know, if you're into kind of more art house horror, you probably dig it. I know it's um, it's one that after it made the rounds of the festivals, like a lot of people were looking forward to it. So, like I said, but like I said, if you're if you're like Tom and you don't and you have to have everything like right now and you want everything like blowing up and See, everything, she's with me now. it's and you want everything to be over in two seconds. It's nothing at all. Then you will probably hate this movie. That's the idea. <laughs> but otherwise, I just like a, that's what you said. That's I like said. I like I like I like an American pacing to things. I, I just do. Everyone has ADD. Okay, whatever. <laughs> you all have ADD, but yeah. So check it out if you're really into atmospheric style horror. If it's playing in a theater near you or whatever, it'll probably be on Shutter soon anyway. <laughs> We'll